What in the- Oh! And that is what inspired me to recreate Factorio, but in 3D, in two weeks. Yeah, I don't know why this inspired me to do that, but whatever. I made it, and here's how I did it. So, with the final stand still in my mind, I wanted to change how the characters in the game were made. So I tested the idea of making a whole cube character in Blender. After importing the model into Unity, I didn't want to make different textures to change the color of just one body part. So what I did is make a bunch of different textures as a mask for each body part, and in a shader, with a given color property, I would multiply the color with the mask so I can change the color of a specific body part. And from there, you have an easily customizable cube character. I am definitely going to use this often. Now it is time for- I didn't want to do a top-down movement since I really wanted the player to experience the third dimension, so I stuck with a third-person character controller. The animations were also from Mixamo, which is, honestly, the best place to get free animations for games. Now that we have a live moving character, we now need to create a world for him to roam around and better yet, industrialize. So to achieve this, I got to work on the world generation. From what I can tell about Factorio, the way worlds are generated is by simply layering different noise values. Each noise value is used to calculate whether or not a given data point will be a specific tile like copper, iron, coal, or grass. The order in which each noise layer is calculated determines their generation priority, and whether or not it will be overwritten. So what I can do is generate large patches of water, and from there, I can generate smaller and smaller patches of ore and resources to have a nice procedurally generated world. But before we get into the actual data generation, we first need to be able to generate a plane, which was pretty easy to implement. Now with this plane, we can now layer noise values and use a texture atlas and set the UVs of the mesh according to what the data on the given face is. And now we have a properly textured. what the- Okay, now the floor is properly textured, but the player's face isn't. Here you go, player. Just like all your friends back in the final stand, have a nice pair of eyes. For this pair of eyes, I implemented a shader that uses a sine wave offset up a bit to keep the eyes open for a long time and closed for a fraction of a second to simulate blinking. Along with the eyes of the player, I added in running particles, and for the floor material, I added in a metallic map to highlight the resources more. After adding those things in, I made the generation of the data more optimized by using C sharp tasks, and I made the terrain infinite. Now that is all the base things I needed to complete in order to finally start working on what makes Factorio, Factorio, which is the automation and industrialization. So to start off with this, I give the player an inventory, which is basically the same one I used for my Minecraft clone quite some time ago. I also implemented a basic crafting system that only checks if you have the required items and exchanges those items for the crafting resultant. After implementing this system, I wanted to add in trees because 1. Factorio has it, and 2. The world feels incredibly flat. Which it is, but... So to implement trees, instead of just adding them into the given tile position, I varied the positions on all axes by 0.1, so it has some nice variation and more of a natural look. Alright, now it is time for the hard part, the structures. I started with this by creating a bunch of models in Blender, a large number of these structures would be scrapped and replaced with other stuff later on. After making the models I would need, I started working on the most basic structure which is the conveyor. The way I did it is that each conveyor would have a list that would keep track of the items it is moving. Depending on whether or not there is another conveyor in front of itself, using the c -sharp job system, the computer would move each item to the target destination which is one tile in front of the conveyor. Once the target position has been reached, the conveyor would transfer that item in its own list to the other conveyor's list. This would therefore make items travel in any direction as long as there is a conveyor in front. After making the conveyor, I added in a drill so items can actually spawn in the world, and I implemented building. Just like the crafting menu, the building menu exchanges items in the player's inventory for an actual structure that they can place. Now the player can extract resources, but they can't do anything with them. And that realization brings me to one of my old demons that I met in my Minecraft clone. The Furnace. The Furnace is the sole reason why I stopped recreating Minecraft. I was stuck at it, and since I got real far in the clone, 
I just stopped entirely and moved on to new projects. But now I had to face it. After a good two to three hours, thanks to my extra experience and knowledge, I finally made a successful implementation of the furnace. Along with the creation of the furnace, I added in an inserter so you can automate item processing. And the result, for me, was real satisfying. Alright, so it's sort of like, it's 11, like almost midnight, and I've been at this for a good couple hours. <laughs> oh my goodness, I made a bunch of random stuff that were not even needed, and then I got rid of all of it. Took a second by just watching Taken 3, just watching TV, just watching TV, just chilling. <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to bed. I just will not be able to sleep if this just does not work at all. Like if it just doesn't work. Okay, there. All right, here's the inserter I made. All right, that's going to allow us to put go into this furnace. Okay, they're going in. They're going in the inserter. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, it's working. Wait, but it like it messed up at a in a second, but it's working. Can I take stuff? Okay, can't right click, but I can left. I can left click, but I can't right click. That's weird. I'll I'll fix that. But um, furnace, furnace. Oh, let's make this guy go faster, like twenty five. There. Oh my goodness. Okay, I need to make two furnaces. All right, here's a second one. Inserter, we're gonna put an inserter. I'm going to put conveyors here. It's going to junction off of um it's gonna go through the iron and then it's going to go through the coal back here. Okay. If the UI doesn't refresh, I'm literally going to perish. It does. It does. Oh it looks so satisfying how it goes around too. Oh my goodness, dude. How, how long ago was the Minecraft video? Oh, oh, yo, four hundred subs! <laughs> oh, on my worst night of coding, the most stressful night. I just have four hundred. Well, at the time of recording, which is eleven eleven twenty twenty one, right now. Thank you all so much for four hundred subscribers. Anyways, after I finally made a successful implementation of furnaces into a game, I wanted to make a storage system so the player can just keep a bunch of stuff because a sandbox game can't be a sandbox game if you can't store stuff in any way. So to create a storage system, I added in a very basic model of what is supposed to be a box in the game. I created a special UI for the box and I added in extractors so you can get resultants from resource processing structures like the furnace. And with all that said, you have Blocktorio, which is a very watered-down 3D knockoff of Factorio. Uh... Well, that is all for this video. Hopefully this makes up for me not uploading for two weeks. Actually, uh, it's, it's three. I'll try to get a devlog on the final standout sometime soon. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.